Paper cut. Hey everyone, Paper cut here back with another video. So unlike most of my videos, this isn't going to be necessarily an analysis or a breakdown of a certain skill. This is going to be about my reflections taking part in the King of the Rockies tournament. For the past two months, I've been prepping for the King of the Rockies tournament, qualifiers hosted by Rising Empire. Shouts to them. Thank you so much for putting on this event. The chance to, if I take, if I won one of the six spots, to go to an in-person LAN event in Denver, Colorado. The event, both in prepping for it and taking part in it, has taught me both what it takes to play in a tournament, but also taught me a lot of harsh lessons that I want to kind of explain and tell, talk about where I'm going to go from here with. Well, I will have videos that are going to go over both the games I played, as well as what it takes to take part in prep for a tournament. This one, as I said, just about the reflections overall about the experience. So let's dive in. Leading up to the tournament, I have honestly never played such focused and purposeful AoE 4. I was grinding constantly to be ready for this tournament. I had started streaming again about four-ish months ago and combined that with my coaching and my YouTube content. I had people watching me prep for this too, which is which is rare. I mean, not a lot for some streamers, but for me, it felt like a lot of people. I don't sell myself as a pro player. I sell myself as a pretty good player who tries to exemplify and show the values that I try to coach on, the things I teach in my YouTube. As I prepped and saw those who were entering the tournament, I started to have this belief that I had a small chance at potentially spurning an upset. Now, to be clear, there are a tier of players who are better than me, but I felt like on a good day, I could potentially get in there just on a good upset. I even had games on the ladder leading up to the first qualifier where I was beating top 100 players on the ladder, which was giving me a huge boost of confidence. Another thing was in the back of my mind, I knew that if I could get a chance to go to this land event and compete in it and take part in it that would be huge not only as a proof of my growth as a player but also as just content as things i could i could learn and then pass on to others via my youtube two weeks ago the first qualifier happened with four spots up the grab and i lost my first series to the amazing yak aoe follow him on twitch but then worked my way through the losers bracket all the way to the qualifying match against nyan racing cat a player who is significantly better than me i had been playing aoe 4 for about like eight hours at that point and i was exhausted but i gave it my all, and I ended up losing in a 3-1 series, which honestly I felt really good about. I got fifth place, one spot out from one of the qualifying spots, and next weekend there would be another chance in the last chance qualifier with two spots on the line. So I felt like at this point I actually might have a chance of making it. One of the things the tournament taught me though was that my sieve pool was too small. I would say I can play a lot of the sieves okay, but I have four sieves I'm definitely better at, which is Japan, Delhi, China, and Malians. And by the virtue of the way that sieves are picked, I would often have three of those four banned, meaning that I had to play mostly sieves I didn't know as well. So knowing that and feeling that I had a legitimate chance to make it, also knowing that the seeding for the tournament was based on your ranked ladder score if you don't have tournament experience like me, I entered the ladder last week looking to crash course both on sieves to add to my pool, but also I needed to play well on the ladder while also doing this in front of a Twitch audience of people that I was hoping I could get to follow me and potentially contract me for coaching services or take part of my YouTube or things like that. So I had many contrasting goals, which at the time I didn't really think about how that was awful. So I was putting a lot of pressure on myself and that's when the losses started to mount. I was playing sieves I wasn't good at, did not prep for to be ready to play for and started losing and losing badly. Instead of in the past where I could kind of shake off those losses, I put way too much stress on myself because I feel like I was failing the people who were watching me. I was failing myself in the prep for a tournament that I really desperately now wanted to win. My rank dropped from Conqueror 1 to Diamond 1 over the week. At one point, I lost 15 out of 19 games. It was brutal. And as I said before, I, I've been pretty good at shaking off losing streaks, but I was putting so much pressure on myself, I was killing the mental part of my game. I would see things while scatting and just not react. I would make decisions that made no sense. I would make good decisions and then second guess myself. And I was just beating up on myself. I think people who were watching me could obviously see myself just like losing energy in front of them. I entered the tournament last weekend and immediately lost my first two matches and I was out. I was devastated because my performance was so low compared to how I know I could play that I felt like I had just failed myself in all the prep I had put in. After a time of processing, I realized something important. If someone had come up to me as a coach and said, hey, can you help me get four sieves to a conqueror level in one week to play in a tournament? I would have laughed at them because that's just not how people learn. And I know this, and yet I ignored all of that because I wanted to skip the steps of learning and just try to immediately be good enough. Learning requires losing in time. It requires purposeful goal-based play. And it 
it requires you to be okay with the lumps you take along the way in doing that. Yeah, I threw that all the window and I was surprised that I lost. I shouldn't have been surprised. So what I learned is tournaments really show what you're made of as an overall player. It requires you to put in the sweat work to truly be prepared on a larger roster of sieves, a variety of sieves, and a variety of maps. You can't just will your way into it. And if you try to, you're just going to fail. And I should have been more prepared for that. At the same time, though, I'm super excited to do this again. I, act I actively want to take part in more tournaments because I realize it's really going to push me to become a much better player, which will make me a better coach and a better teacher. So if you want to check me out on Twitch, I'm going to be taking this learning process in overdrive. I'm going to start a process where every week I grind a singular sieve and track everything I've learned about it as I'm playing it. I'm also going to link the document I'm tracking the information on in the description below, which also includes my current creation of a sieve counter guide which isn't done yet, I'm still working on it, but it has a good amount of information there already. So if you want to see my notes, see my learning process, and try to take some of that into your own games, I'd love for you to check it out. On YouTube, you expect me to start doing more Civ breakdown videos, which I've done a couple on, but I've started to move away from. I'm going to go back to them because I really want to solidify the things I learned in these videos to help me keep it in the brain and hopefully help teach you guys something as well. So overall, I'm going to be throwing out rank. I'm not focusing on that. I'm going to be focusing on growth. The learning will require losses and require me to experiment and try, which will inherently lead to more losses as I try things that won't work, but I, I got to see if they will. The burden of winning will come later. For now, the burden is to learn. Overall, I want to thank everyone who has supported me. I, I honestly can't believe I have a thousand subs on YouTube. I have people who are subbing me on Twitch. I have people taking part in my coaching services. I, I can't believe the support of the AOE4 community and how deeply people want to improve and support others who who are also trying to do the same. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to continue taking part in the AOE4 community. Good luck on your games and see you on the ladder.